Hi, welcome to the Steamer Lab. I'm Christian, and today I'm going to be showing you how to properly and safely set up a cold trap for the use in glove box. So the cold trap is used to uh, remove solvents from the glove box along with the collecting solid product after your reactions. So there are a few things you need to familiarize yourself before you start your cold trap. So firstly, we're going to have a fast on-off power switch, which is, in our case, a surge protector. Connected to our surge protector is going to be our vacuum pump. Okay, and this vacuum pump is connected to our um, trap setup uh, via these rubber uh, vacuum lines, which are connected to these glass pieces that have O-rings and their individual clamps. We do have a bulb here that's not, we're gonna, that I'll show you later, that does have its own individual ring and clamp. We do have our valve switches, which we need to make sure we understand um, which ones go where. For example, this is to localize the vacuum until this point, this is our evacuation valve, and this is our valve switch that goes into the glove box, okay? They are righty tighty lefty loosey um, valve knobs as well. Next thing, let's go ahead and look at our flask. So this flask is borosilicate glass, and the base is aluminum base, okay? It's essentially a big thermal flask, like a Stanley. Now let's go ahead and look into the glove box. Uh, towards the back end, we're gonna notice a black perpendicular uh, valve. That's our main uh, switch valve that allows vacuum to get pulled up into that point. From there, after we pull it parallel, pointing towards us, we're gonna notice these vacuum lines that lead into our secondary valves, where we're able to then pull vacuum on a uh, reaction that's occurring right there, or to pull um, a solid product. All right, now that we're familiar with all the pieces to our cold trap setup, let's go ahead and put on our lab coats. Before we turn on our trap, we're gonna make sure that all our valves are closed, okay? So righty tighty, we're gonna make sure they're all tight, tight, tight. From that point, we're gonna go ahead into our power, uh, our surge protector and turn on the power. All right. Now, vacuum is gonna be pulled up to this valve. Let's go ahead and grab our bulb and I'll show you the next steps. Now we're gonna go ahead and put our bulb onto our setup. So we're gonna take our O-ring, our designated O-ring for this bulb. And we've got to notice that there is a ridge within here where the O-ring will be seated. If it's not seated properly, the vacuum seal will not be, uh, will obviously not work because it will be, be, it will be pulling air into the cold trap, which is not a good thing because liquid nitrogen is extremely cold. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and place it onto here and support it. Next, we're gonna take our, our valve and slowly open it, hearing for the, the, the change in sound and also, the vacuum will hold the bulb. We know that this is a strong seal, so what we're gonna do is grab our clamp, put it into position, and what we'll do is we'll add threads. What I like to think about is, there's no threads here, but as we tighten it, now we can see threads right here. And that is tight and ready to go. Now we have to wait 10 to 15 minutes to make sure that this whole uh, system is under vacuum. Okay, now that the bulb is fully under vacuum, we're gonna go ahead and lower our bulb into our doer. So when filling our doer with nitrogen, it's important to not over exceed the height of the bulb of our bulb, okay? Um, what that means is if the liquid nitrogen is too high, it's gonna freeze the solvent that's entering the uh, bulb and essentially um, obstruct the stem. As you notice, uh, as I'm pouring away, the uh, liquid nitrogen begins to evaporate. So you will have to overfill that first and then you can always lower the trap or the lower the bulb um, as needed, as solvent begins to evaporate off. So come in, come in a little bit closer. So what we're gonna be trying to do is make sure the bulb is fully submerged. So we're gonna lower the trap a little bit more. Right about there. And what we're gonna do is, actually let's go a little bit lower. 
There we go. That's great. And we're going to add a towel to contain the coldness. All right, from there, we're going to go ahead and open up our main valve to the glove box. And again, you're going to notice a change in sound from the vacuum. Good. All right. So now that the coil trap is ready to go, all set up, we're going to go ahead and enter our glove box. And starting from the main valve, which is closest to the back of the glove box, and right now it's in the uh, uh, pair or perpendicular position in the closed position. And what we want to do is actually turn it towards us in the parallel position, opening up the valve. Now vacuum will be up to the secondary valves here. Okay. So for example, when we want to pull off solvent, dry our uh, solid product, we're going to go ahead and place our uh, red septa on the top of the vial. And we're going to go ahead and open up our valve lefty loosey. That'll then op uh, pull vacuum into this area. And there's going to be a pretty solid um, securement of this from the vacuum pulling on it. From that point, once you're done pulling vacuum, it may take you a few hours. You're going to go ahead and uh, close the valves in the opposite direction as you started. So we're going to close our secondary valves first. So righty tighty. And it's also good practice to make sure that the other valve is also closed too. And from there, we're going to go ahead and close our main valve. And a key note I wanted to mention is when you are pulling vacuum on these and you open up your secondary valve, make sure you don't open up the secondary valve until you are ready to go and pulling vacuum. The last thing we want to do is pull vacuum and pull uh, the nitrogen atmosphere out of the glove box. Okay. So we only pull vacuum once we have a vial ready or a vacuum flask ready to go. So now that it's closed, we could go ahead and exit the glove box and move towards the trap to uh, finish it off. So now that we're out of the glove box, we're gonna go ahead and put our lab coats back on our PPE gear because we are handling very cold liquid along with glass that can um, create shards and um, create injuries. So uh, glasses, um, lab coat, pants, shoes are needed. So we already closed the uh, valves inside the glove box. And now we're gonna to have to do that same with the trap. So the next steps are gonna to need to be done very quickly, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and remove our cloth. Okay. And as I mentioned, the next steps will need to be done quickly because there are hazards. This is a very cold um, uh, containment. So as we remove the liquid nitrogen, the bulb will begin to warm up and the gases in there will begin, or the liquid turn into gas and expand causing, um, can cause an explosion, right? So we wanna be quick and efficient when done, doing so. So I mentioned closing the valves in the opposite direction as we started. So we closed the secondary valve, the main valve in the glove box. Now we're gonna go from our main valve, closing our, our valve here, lifting it, opening up the vent and removing the bulb, okay? So this will be relatively quickly and yeah, let's get this done. So closing the valve here, closing the valve there, lifting. And we're gonna take our bulb directly to the hood. find that you have this running because the vacuum is contained to this one point, okay? From here, you're gonna go ahead and turn off your power switch. And uh, just for good practices, again, righty tidy, all of them, especially your evacuate, your, uh, your bleeding evacuation uh, valve. And here, all righty tidy to close them off. And then go ahead and put the remaining liquid nitrogen back into our Working Tin Industries uh, liquid nitrogen tank. And voila. So I hope this has been an informational video for those of you who may be entering a lab with the glove box or those of you that may be joining the Steve Lab or someone who just needs a refresher on how to properly and safely set up your trap system to pull vacuum in your glove box. Um, so now that you have all this great information, go ahead and be the best chemist you can be. Thanks.